Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the podcast party. I am Sharina Tintwell Watson. I am your empowerment producer. And I am so excited that you decided to join us this morning at the podcast party. Happy Wednesday. Let's win on Wednesday. Good morning. Good morning. So from 730 to 735, we invite individuals to join us at the podcast party. So good morning. Thank you, Lord. Welcome to the podcast party. We're going to talk about priorities today and properly prioritizing or prioritize properly. Good morning. As we invite individuals to the podcast party, every morning I tell um, everybody, you know, while you're inviting your friends, family, loved ones, haters, maters, whatever they are, search your heart, search your mind, make sure your heart is open to receive and your heart, is, I mean, your mind is ready to be renewed. Whatever's for you is for you. Whatever is not, don't take it. That's fine. I am just Sharina sharing a transformational message um, as we travel through these transformational seasons on this transformational journey so using god's word now using god's word you know i've been in church all my life since i was a little girl so you know i was forced to go to church and then i was pushed to go to church and then i had made a decision i'm not going to church but however want to get you back want to get you back yes it will get on the knees lord i need you so I know the cliches of the Bible, and I know some scriptures, and I know biblical stories stand out for me the most. It is 732. Um, Biblical stories stand out to me the most. So, um, with the biblical stories, I can remember those. (coughs) So, the reason I'm telling you this is because... um, the reason that we are on the podcast is because I get to share a message with you guys on this journey. And the way that I'm sharing it is making sure that I have scripture because we have to have foundation for the mature, the more experienced, the knowledgeable. We have to have um, some foundation. So <clears throat> this is why we use, that's why I use scripture as I'm sharing. However, it's not a spiritually deep podcast. It's not none of that. It's just me sharing a message using the true word of God. So as I was traveling through the book and, you know, studying and trying to figure out what makes sense, what don't make sense, some stuff did, some stuff didn't. And I believe I did a few podcasts where I made some mistakes, but um, I was going to go back and fix them. But if you read and you study for yourself, then you will know that, "Mm -mm, Sharina, girl, that won't write. Uh -uh -uh -uh." And then you can help me help somebody else because then I can come back and do a part two or something. And fix it. But that lets you know that you are studying. Because if you just follow my word or anybody's words. Ain't no telling what's going to happen. So. Good morning. It is 734. May your struggles. May your battles. Let you know you need God. Even in my bad days, he was still good. Because I'm imperfect, and he is perfect. So, now along the podcast party, if you're listening, I've been inviting, like, hey, somebody help me. Somebody help me. I've been texting. Come on, help me. I think I got something. I don't know if it's right. I need your help. However, I'm real. I'm going to be real with Sharina. And if this is what I got, I'm going to share it with the people. But if it ain't right, I'm going to tell you, hey, I messed up. I messed up. But you're going to have to come back for the part two. <laughs> and if you ask me something, I'm not acting like I know nothing because I don't. I'm just getting from the book. And um, I'm going to tell you, listen, I don't know that right now. And I didn't study that. So you will have to go look for yourself or, uh, you know, we can reconvene and I'll get back with you. Something like that. So good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the podcast party. 
Thank you, thank you. I am Sharina Tidwell Watson. I am your empowerment producer. And I <clears throat> I like to let people know that this is just a podcast that I made a decision. Me and God, we was hanging out and we was like, I'm like, you know what? This information that I be getting be really good for me. But how can I help somebody else? And, you know, everything shut down and people going through depression and stress and all that. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to get on this podcast. I don't feel like getting dressed and all that stuff because it ain't about me. Just look at this black screen and listen. And whatever's for you, take it. If it's not, throw it in the trash. And then um, I was like, okay, I'm going to do this. Oh, I got time to do this. If I do it in the morning before I go to work, um, if I do it on a Saturday night, regardless of what I'm doing or who I'm with, I'm going to do it. If I got to be 15, 20 minutes, I'm going to be dedicated. I'm going to do it. Or Sunday morning, so that makes, you know, a platform for everybody to kind of get in on. I did that, and this is where we are. So the only thing I want to do is let you, I'm, I'm just sharing a transformational message. As we go through our transformational seasons in 2021, on this transformational journey called life. That's all I want to do. That's all I want to do. So as I was sharing, some of the stuff may be right. Some of it may be wrong. Some of you may think it's my opinion. Some of it may be facts. However, my ultimate goal is to get the truth. And in my process of getting the truth, I use foundational scriptures. And I've been looking and I've been looking. And some Bibles got the stuff. Some Bibles don't got the stuff. So I'm studying and I'm looking and I'm searching and I'm praying and I'm writing and I'm asking people to help me. And I'm doing all this stuff. Because I want to make sure if I'm winning, you going to win too. And the only way to make sure we win is make sure we got the truth. So that's all we do here on the podcast party. So today, hmm, let's see, let's see. So today, um, we're going to talk about the priority of true worship. The priority of true. Now, everybody want to, you know, I want to be rich. I want to be wealthy, but we don't prioritize properly. And being that we don't prioritize properly, we don't get the results that we're expecting or that we're looking for. So, the priority of true worship, first of all, our priority should be God, ourselves, our families, and our careers. When it comes to your money, God, tithe, give back, um, yourself, pay yourself and invest in you, um, your bills, definitely, your responsibilities. And then I guess whatever's left over, whether it's miscellaneous, groceries, whatever it is in your household. But we do know God is first. Pay yourself and invest in you and your business or whatever you may have. And then make sure that you take care of your bills. So prioritizing properly is important. And if we don't prioritize properly, then we're in trouble. However, if we don't know how to prioritize properly, then we're also in trouble. So... We're thinking, oh, I'm prioritizing, I'm doing everything right, and it's still not working. And I'm giving, and I'm helping, and I'm doing all these things, and it's still not working. But we're not prioritizing God and worship properly. So, there are a few things we want to talk about today. Prioritizing properly. So, God is seeking a true worshiper. So, we want to go through these transformational stages and these seasons in our life, and we want to do better and all that. But God, God is still seeking God is still seeking a true worshiper. So, yes, we love music, we dance, we pray, we do all these things. But God is seeking a true worshiper. A true worshiper. So, the fact that God seeks true worshipers implies that there are false worshipers. Hmm. So, false worshipers either worship something other than God or they may attempt to worship the true God. But do it in ways that actually dishonor him so let's read oh okay okay. true worshipers so ask yourself i'm not oh i'm looking i'm looking make sure my got my my scriptures hold on give me one second because we need foundation to make sure that we write um, can I go back? Okay. We express adoration. So, yeah, music is a way, one of the ways that we express adoration. And it's, as Paul states in 1 Corinthians 10 31, whether then you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. 
Thus, all of life is to be orientated by God, orientated Godward, permeated with a sense of his majesty and glory. So, however you express adoration, whether it's music, whether it's singing in the shower, whether it's worshiping at church, whatever it is, and there is balance in worship because I know it's somewhere, I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to share the scripture where everything has to be done properly and orderly and things like that. So if it's a distraction, is that really God? So your adoration, your adoration, how do you express your adoration? Is it music? I love music. So God ain't say, oh, Sharon, you can't get rid of, you got to get rid of music. Uh -uh, because now you done got saved and you go to church, you got to get rid of it. First of all, I love music. So, but I have a healthy relationship with music. So, depending on my setting, depending on who I'm with, what I'm doing, if I'm having a good time, if I'm with my husband, if I'm with my homegirls, it's a healthy relationship with it. Like, you have to, listen, y'all don't, you better read for yourself. God said, express adoration. But he also said, music is one way we express that adoration. So, if you love music, why do people say, oh, you can't listen to that music? Uh -uh, that is not of God. First of all, stop telling me what I can't do. And let me figure out what the true word of God says. So now when you tell me I can't listen to my music, I'm going to tell you, no, uh, 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 1 Corinthians 10, 31 said, music is one way we express that adoration. So I also know I have a healthy relationship with him because I have personal conversations with him. So now that I have a healthy relationship with him and I know what his true word says, you can't tell me I can't listen to my music. They say he turned water into wine. I know I need more water than wine, so that means I have more water than wine. But it's your relationship with the wine. Like I had a long day at work, Lord, and I'm talking, I'm talking to God while I'm drinking my wine too, and watching TV and listening to my music. And I'm like, ooh, thank you, Lord, I had a hard day. This wine show is good, Lord. Or you know, I'm just have, just, I'm grateful. I'm, it may just be a hard thing when I'm just sitting back. I ain't saying nothing out loud, but I'm just enjoying my wine. I'm at peace, love, I'm happy and all. And those are all good fruits of the spirit. So if we know the word for ourselves, then we can prioritize properly and stop allowing people to dictate what we can and cannot do. So what is your relationship with what you enjoy? You enjoy shopping. That, that may be an outlet for you. But, you know, these are these are things that we can also be addicted to as long as we have a healthy relationship with it. See, the issue comes in when we don't have a healthy relationship. A healthy relationship. And that's in anything in life. If you don't have a healthy relationship with whatever it is in life, then you're always going to not get the results you want if it's not a healthy relationship. How can you get healthy out of toxic? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, music. Enjoy your music, if that's you. Hmm. Since God is seeking true worshipers who worship him in spirit and in truth, we should make it our priority become, to become such worshipers. So, in John 4, 23... Jesus tells this woman that a significant trans transition is about to take place. But an hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. Jesus' presence began this change from the old covenant to the new covenant. Under the old way of worship, place was significant. All Jewish males had to appear before God in Jerusalem for the three annual feast. That was in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 16, 16. But in the, in the way, in the new way, which Jesus inaugurated, y'all know about our inauguration on January 20. Y'all know what that means. When Jesus, come on, in, but in the way, the new way, which Jesus inaugurated, he is the new temple. And that's in John 2, 1921. So yesterday when I was talking about the temple, I was like, okay. And when I stopped like that and I paused like that, that's like, okay, God, you telling me something or no. And I'm trying to figure it out at the same time. Or as I'm sharing it with you and myself, he may be revealing something different or something else. So I was trying to figure out, okay, the temple, what is the temple? The temple is the house. Okay, great. What are we? Are we the storehouse? Are we not the storehouse? So I'm trying to figure that out 
in my mind, along with God trying to tell me what's going on. And then the enemy is like, uh uh uh, you all wrong. So you got to be sure that you're listening. Or just, you know, wait till you get it. So yesterday, if you listen to the podcast from yesterday, I was talking about the temple, but I'm not, I wasn't really clear, but I did ask some people some questions to see if I was right. And I'm still waiting on that response. So I can't really tell you about yesterday. Um, But it does say, Jesus tells this woman that a significant transition is about to take place. And that's John 4, 23. But an hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the father in spirit and truth jesus presence began this change from the old covenant to the new under the old way of worship place was significant under the old will so he looking for true worshipers he's not looking for the old way of worship so place in the old way of worship was significant so it's not as significant in this day and time because you're looking for true worshipers. So a true worshiper don't need a significant place to worship God. So we have church homes, we have buildings, we have all, but a, it says under the old way of worship, place was significant. And that's when all the Jewish males had to appear before God in Jerusalem for the three annual feast. And that was talking about it in Deuteronomy 16, 16. But in the new way, which Jesus inaugurated, he is the new temple, says John 2, 19 through 21. Believers are being built into a holy temple in the Lord, Ephesians 2, 21. In 1 Peter 2, 5, that's where we gather to worship is secondary. How and whom we worship is primary. So you mean to tell me that I can go to my best friend's house and we can gather to worship. So I don't have, because that the, the, the location is no longer primary. Where we gather to worship is secondary. How and whom we worship is primary. So you mean to tell me when I go to Triple Effects on Friday night and I'm with my husband and I go to dance and it's a love song by Beyonce or somebody and I'm dancing but my mind is on you or my husband. My heart is thinking about my, I see my husband and I think about my, I'm all right because I got a healthy relationship with music. And you said the gathering place is secondary, but how and whom we worship is primary. So my, my, my ultimate concern, my primary is you, not people, not pastors, not bishops. Not ushers, not deacons, not none of them. Mm -mm. How I worship and whom I worship is primary. How I worship and whom I worship is primary. Where we gather to worship is secondary. Didn't God show us in 2020, it ain't about where you gather to worship. It's how and whom you worship. So I could be in the grocery store. And I can be trying to help somebody. And we can start having a conversation just from me trying to help them. And I show love, peace, gentleness, kindness, gratefulness, faith. We talk about you because you are all those fruits of the spirit. So if I show love, I'm showing you, right? And whom I worship and how I worship is what's primary. It doesn't matter that I'm in Walmart because that's secondary. So it does matter because it comes out the primary. So you definitely want to have a covering. But your primary is about whom and how. And we get it mixed up. So we prioritizing improperly. And today I want to teach you how to prioritize properly. Your first priority is a personal relationship with who you worship, which is God and Jesus. And they, 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 the, whole, they, the Holy Spirit is used through us. So, who and how is primary? So, when you think about, oh, my priorities are God, me, family, career. 
When you think about your relationship with God and you're prioritizing him first, are you doing that in the practical when it comes to your money? Are you doing that in the spiritual? Are you doing that in truth? So spiritually, oh, I'm going to church. You know, I I did my part. I did this. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Who are you worshiping, though, when you're saying thank you? Who are you worshiping? Are you worshiping God and the man? Are you worshiping the man of God? What other, you know, what other beliefs are you, you worshiping? Because Jesus is the only one that came back in the flesh. So who and what, how, how, oh, that's primary. When we go to church, we think, oh, I'm going to church. I'm going to support my friend. Oh, I'm going to church because that's the right thing to do. Oh, it's Easter. It's the only thing. It's right to go to church. It's right to go to church. And when we go to church, we sit in the pews and we have a good time in church. And we listen to the music and we do all these things. And we forget that we are the performers. We are not the audience. So if you change your mindset and you shift your perspective, just imagine that God is the head of your life. Right? He sends Jesus. The Holy Spirit is, you know, you're being used by, you know, the Holy Spirit is there. And God sends your pastor, your preacher, your bishop, your first lady, whoever. God sends them to the pulpit. Bam. We right here. Then we got the praise team. We got all this stuff going on. Awesome. You guys or us, we think we the audience. No, everybody from the pews to the pulpit to the choir stand should be Worshiping God. True worship. So God is our audience. We are the performers. The pastor and the, the, the praise team, they give us the cues on the side and they, you know, help us along the way. But at the end of the day, our audience is God. And we got it twisted. That's why I said we got it backwards, y'all. We got it backwards. We think, oh, we coming to church. Uh uh uh. We should be running to church to perform. Because God is our audience. So when you start going to church, look at it differently. Don't think, oh, you're doing somebody a favor. Are you doing God a favor? No, 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 no. I am running in here on purpose for a purpose because I need to learn how to prioritize my life properly. And I am going to perform for you. So when I go out in these streets and I go back outside and I'm the hands and feet of Christ and I'm the pella and uh, dispenser of the bread of life, when I go back out the doors... I am now going out to help somebody else. So I'm going to sow love. I'm going to sow peace. I'm going to sow joy, happiness. I'm going to do all that. These are the things that I'm going to be addicted to because now I know the truth. I can walk in love. I can walk in prosperity. I can walk in all these things you promised me. So I don't have a problem sowing back into the community when I go back out. I don't mind sowing into the, the practical sense. of the, I don't mind sowing and giving back. Because now I understand the, the, the right cycle. I understand the right cycle. I understand how this thing really works. So God is your audience. Your pastor, your team, your, 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 your uh, praise team, your praise team, all those people, they're giving you like cues like, come on, y'all, come on, y'all. Come on, y'all, come on, y'all. Come on, y'all, come on, y'all. And we in the congregation are the performers. And we are putting on a show. We need to put on this great show. We need to put on this show for God. God said, come on, put on for your city. I need you to go back out there and I need you to put on for your city. But if you look at the congregation sometimes, the congregation be slim. And I'm trying to figure out if we the performers and God is the audience, why people ain't running in here? Because if Jay-Z was in here, oh, it'd be packed, $200, $300 tickets. But if you see that God is your audience, you are actually the performer. You will put nobody else above him. You will perform yourself. I know if I'm a performer and I'm on the same ticket because we equal, because we just got the same amount of hours. We can do the same things we can do. But some people want to know more. Some people don't. But however, God said, what do you say? Um, what do you say? He don't have respect to person. So if I'm a performer, now that I know today, I'm a performer. And I'm in the same lineup with the other performers that's here on earth. 
I'm not going to be all excited and gun ho about, oh my God, he's a celebrity. Oh my God, he's a millionaire. Oh my, no, 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 no. We're all performers. And the only audience is God. So I don't have to compare myself to you. I don't have to look. I'm not putting on a show for you. I'm not getting dressed for you. I'm not doing. I am a performer myself. And I'm putting on a show for God. Because he is my audience and I want to give him the best show. So, I am a performer. You are a performer. Now, the question is, if you're a performer, who are you putting on the show for? Because God is your audience, and then you got the people out here. So, when you come out of that part, that, that relation, whatever, that building, we won't say, the building, the, the church, or whatever, that when you come out of there, who are you putting on the show for? Who are you putting on the show for? So the, the, the question is, am I a true worshiper? Or am I a worshiper? And do, do people think that I got to be in this building or this church or this location in order to be a true worshiper? According to what we just read, again, that was... Let me go back and make sure I get it all because I don't want to mess up. But an hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. Jesus' presence began this change from the old covenant to the new. Under the old way of worship, place was significant. All Jewish males had to appear before God in Jerusalem for the three annual feasts. That's Deuteronomy 16, 16. But in the new way, which Jesus inaugurated, we know what inauguration means. But in the new way, which Jesus inaugurated, he is the new temple. John 2, 19 through 21. Believers are being built into a holy temple in the Lord, Ephesians 2.21 and 1 Peter 2.5. Thus, where we gather to worship is secondary. How and whom we worship is primary. So again, it lets me know that secondary is important, but primary is vital. Unbelievers, such as the Samaritan woman at this point, often mistakenly think that if they go through the proper externals of worship, proper, you got to go to church. You got to give your money. You got to show up. You better do. You got to do. So unbelievers, such as the Samaritan woman at this point, often mistakenly think that if they go through the proper externals of worship, then things are okay between them and God. As long as they go to church, uh, go to a church building and go through the weekly rituals, they figure that everything is fine. But they haven't dealt with God on the heart level. They haven't repented of their sins of thought, their sins of word, their sins indeed, their word indeed. So Jesus tells her that it's not the externals. That matter as much as the internal. We must make it our priority to become true worshipers of God in spirit and truth. Note three truths from these verses. Let me see. One, like I said, God is seeking true worshipers. Hmm. So. And there's a man by the name of John Edwards. And he argued like God created the world for his own glory. And then there was a book, I believe it's called God's Passion for His Glory. So everything, including the salvation of his elect and even the damnation of the wicked will result in glory to God. Hmm? Wow. Wow. So God is seeking a true worshiper. So God now is seeking worshipers who will bring him glory, not just for an hour on Sunday, but every day through all their activities. 
we cannot properly worship God on Sundays if we're not worshiping him throughout the week. So prioritizing properly. We think we have to do whatever the man of God says and do all this thing. He, The man of God that God gave you, that God sent to help you, that is not who you're supposed to worship. You're supposed to be worshiping. You were informed. We're we supposed to worship God. So I, I don't allow, so I, what I do is I do a heart check for Sharina. So I encourage you to do the same thing. Do a heart check for yourself. Like, is my heart right for real? Like, I love people. I want to help as much as I can. I want to do my part. I want to do, I want to do. Yes. If my heart is right. Okay. God, he does know your heart, but then he also wants to know, do you know his word? And if we knew his word for real, if we even tried to find out, we'll, we'll, we'll be, we'll live better. We'll have a better life. But when you really start studying, you ask him like, Lord, help me understand. He'll give you that understanding. And then you won't be in bondage to nobody and to nothing. But we don't know. And they say for our culture, if you put it in the book, it's a wrap. I mean, you can listen to it on audio, but this updated stuff is not all that good. Because I told y'all in my other podcast, I've been look, I was looking for First John 4 and 24, 23 and 24. And as I'm looking for this particular book and scripture and stuff, because it led me there when I was reading and I was reading something else. And then it was like, yeah, the only way you can please God is in spirit and in truth. And I'm like, okay, so truth is practical. That's like what I'm doing every day in my own life, like going to work. That's, that's truth. Okay. Well, I got that part down. So I need to get my spirit together. And that's what I'm thinking when I read it, because if you don't look further, you won't find it. So if you go read, um, First, look for, look for, if you read John 4, 23 and 24, it says, but the time, now the time has come, something to that effect. And then it gives you 23 and 24. But then when I, I was doing different studies, something on something else. And it sent me to first John 4, 23 and 24. So then I'm like, okay, let me go to first John. And I'm like. It keeps taking me back to the Samaritan woman. And I know the Samaritan woman, and that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for 1 John 4. And when I finally got to look for found 1 John 4, it was in like the King James Version or special versions because these new updated versions don't have it. So you won't know it if you don't go looking for it. That's why God said, study for yourself. Study for yourself. It's all connected, but it's all over the place. I want to see if you're going to study it for yourself. So I end up finding it. And... It's in the King James Version and some other versions or whatever. But I was like, okay, well, I know it's in the Holy Bible, and I need to get me a better Bible. So I went to Walmart to get me a Bible to just make sure I'm not crazy. Like, I know this Bible said this. We picked up the Bible, and I told him on my podcast yesterday because it's, it gets clearer and clearer every day. Um, so yesterday I was telling him, like, Anaya was like, Mom, make sure that First John 4 is in there before you go back. Because I'm thinking it's a Holy Bible. I'm good. She said, open it and make sure. So I looked through and it was not in there. I'm like, okay, I see one John, two John, three John, but I'm looking for four John. Where is four John? And every time I look for four John, it seems to be not found. So I encourage you to go on the chase and look for it and tell me what you find. If you can get back with me, tell me what you find. Because the reason we can't live in spirit and in truth is because something is missing. And we don't know what's missing until we go look for it. So go find it. Study. Listen. However, we want to talk about prioritizing your life properly. So, yes, you have done everything that you could possibly do. You know, you go to work. You take care of your family. You take care of your kids. You pay your bills. You put yourself on the back burner. Your feet looking crazy right now because you don't even... It ain't time for a pedicure and you ain't wasting no money on no pedicure. So you're trying to hold on to what you're doing. If you're doing it, you're doing it. That's practical. That's what we, that's practical. Yes, yes. Everything is in order. However, do you know what that looks like spiritually? So we have some things we got to do in the practical. Yes, prioritize. Yes, but in spiritually, what we are you? He commanded you to pay ten percent on every ten percent on your earnings. That's ten cent on every dollar that you bring in. So are you tithing? That was a command. And you won't know as a command unless you read for yourself. 
Like, I understand now. I, I can verbatimly, basically, read Malachi 3.10. Yes, 3.10 through 12. Bring me all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now here with saith the Lord of hosts. How will I open you up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there may not be room enough to receive it? And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. And, da -da -da -da. and I know that. Great. Got it. Bam. So, when they say it in church, I'm like, oh, that's all I need to know. Bam. That's all I need. Bam. I know it. I know it by heart, too. Mm, got it. But when I went to study and I read Malachi 3.10, I was like, it's, I've been told, you know, throughout the, read the whole thing for yourself. Read it. Make sure it makes sense. Read it before. Read it after. Da -da -da -da. And I'm like, oh, I got to read all this. So I went to go read Malachi 3. And I started at verse 6. And it was telling me, like, this is why. This is your part. This, da -da. And I'm like, so then it got to a point where I said, will a man rob God? And that's when you kind of like quicken yourself like, no, I, I mean, listen, I might not be perfect, Lord, but I ain't going to rob you. I might not be perfect. You know, I'm showing love. I'm taking care of my family. I'm doing everything I can do in the practical. Uh, you know, I'm doing, I'm doing it. What, what else you want from me? But when he said, will a man rob God? That sounds real harsh. So I'm like, uh-uh, I'm not going to rob God. And God said, uh-huh, you robbing me. You already robbing me. And you're like, no, I'm not. How am I robbing you? He said, in your tithes and offerings. You rob me in your tithes and offerings. Oh, okay, okay, so I need to give you tithes and offerings. I need to pay tithes and offerings. I need to pay tithes and offerings. So first of all, you need to gain understanding that God don't need your money. The pastor don't need your money. The church don't need your money. It is a trust thing and a heart thing. He wants to know you on a heart level. If I command you to give me 10% of your earnings, what is your heart telling you? What's your, what's your heart talking about? Mm -hmm. Can I trust you to just do the 10%? If I can't trust you to do the 10%, why is you praying and why is you begging and why is you asking for more? Give me a new car. Give me a new house. Can I get a promotion? Can I get, can I, can I, can I? But I've commanded you to give 10% of your earnings. And that was a command. But see, we don't understand that portion because we didn't go read for ourselves to gain understanding of why or what or who or how or nothing. We just read and follow along with what the people say and keep it moving. And that's why we're operating in spirit. But are we operating in truth? Are we operating in truth? God has already given us everything that we need. Everything that we need. We already got it. It's in us. He, he, he got us. He got us. But he needs us to know that he's looking for a true worshiper. And true worshipers worship him. He is your audience. And how you worship and who you worship is primary. Where you worship. Where you gather. Where you fellowship. That's secondary. So all of us been in our houses working. All a lot of us, I'm gonna say all. A lot of us been in our houses working. You're gathered in your house where you already pay the bills. That what are you talking about? You can't worship me until you get to the building. The building gonna be closed down for a long time. What are you gonna do? Are y'all gonna get on that conference call on that phone and worship? Are y'all gonna get on Zoom and worship? Are y'all gonna gather in the parking lot and worship? What are you gonna do? Are you are you gonna so if you can't do none of that, are you still going to worship me? Because it's not about the building. It's not about who you're with. It's how and whom you're worshiping. So all this time COVID been going on and I've been in my house. You mean to tell me? I could have been worshiping through cooking. I could have been worshiping through conversations. I could have been worshiping through music. I, it's how and whom I worship. And do you have a healthy relationship with it? So people say, oh, I, you know, I got to have me some wine. I got to have me some libations. I like to, you know, I like spirit drinks. What is your relationship with that? You can say, oh, mm -mm, that is terrible, girl. That is over there drinking that stuff. Uh-uh, girl, that is terrible. But what are you doing? What are you doing? Because if you're hating, and if you're jealous, and if you're envious, those are not fruits of the Spirit. Those are not good fruits. Good fruits is love, gentleness, gratefulness, self-control, kindness. And if you're somewhere else hating on me, 
then that, that's not a spirit of God. And you judging me about my healthy relationship with what I have or what God said is okay for me. And the reason I know it's okay for me because I understand the truth about who God is in my life. Because I've studied and I read and I, I and I get it. I get it now. I get it. And understanding that his word said, I will only bow down to one master. God, you are the audience. I thank you for everybody else helping me along the way, helping us along the way. We are here to help one another. We are here to serve one another. That is our job. And God has sent his, his, his elect. He sent his people that he's called to help us along the way. And some of us want to blame them. It's not their fault. God is the audience. It's not their, They're here to help. They're giving you cues. Come on, y'all. Come on. Look at the look at the word. Look, and they can't read the whole Bible to you at church because then you already complain about church too long. Why they gotta take all day? Why? Listen, if you knew what they knew, then you wouldn't mind sitting to listen and to learn because it's gonna take a long time. <laughs> Trying to read that. That's why you're supposed to go back home and study for yourself. So he's like, oh, my pastor told me. Or my pastor said. So then we are here to help each other. And if you know better, you can do better. But the reason you can't help your pastor is because you don't know better. Because you ain't trying to do better. And you ain't go home and read for yourself. So you can't say, hey, pastor, I got a question. Can you help me understand this? And can you, you can't ask the pastor no questions because you ain't went home. That book been in the backseat of that car in that window from Sunday to Sunday. So when you don't, you got to get the truth for yourself. That is nobody else's blame, nobody else's fault. God is your audience. Ask him. He will give you the people in your life and that you need the obstacles, the all he give you everything you need to learn every lesson that you need, I promise you. But how often do we talk to him? Because he's primary. So he moved. He's you know what? I'm gonna move my people out of the way. Go ahead, y'all. Relax, rest, enjoy your family. You've been working real hard for me. Go ahead, pastors, bishops, evangelists, messengers, apostles, everybody. Everybody, y'all just go ahead. Don't worry about the building. Don't worry about going to the bed because they ain't getting it. They just ain't getting it. They just still ain't getting it. So I'm going to go ahead and shut it down. I'm going to force them. I'm going to make them. They got to stay in the house. And I'm going to give them some extra money so they won't complain. And they still can have their job because they can work from home. And they ain't got to worry about the kids being out there and nothing because now they're going to be home with you at virtual school. So we got you. We got your undivided attention. So you couldn't go to church. At, you, you didn't go to church at first. Or you went and your worship was into the wrong. You wasn't a true worship. But that's fine. We all. 2020 was a learning process for all of us. But when they shut that building down. Some people lost it. I had to ask my grandma. Like you know you know older people. They go to church. If they can't get to church. The church van is still picking them up. I said they got a church bus for first Baptist Zion. What? What? They, where you going, Grandma? You want me to get your ride? They gonna catch that bus. They believe they go into that building. So I said, Grandma, you know, church, you know, COVID and pandemic and all this stuff going on. How you gonna? What you gonna? What y'all doing for church? How y'all? Are y'all still getting together for church? They older. Yeah, we show sure is. We show sure is. Well, Grandma, um, I know my Grandma ain't got no uh, computer. So I go what was on to say because I ask questions because I want to know. If I, if I want to know, I got to ask questions. So I say, Grandma, you ain't got no computer. So how y'all doing church if you can't go to that building and Sister Linda and Brenda and them ain't picking you up and you ain't get on that van? How is y'all doing the church? She said, oh, we get on this phone. Nay, we call this number. And now, you know, some of them, they got to put in that code, and they don't put that code in wrong 17 times, and they kick them off that line 16 times, and they're going to keep on trying to get on there. By the time they get on there, they're doing the benediction. Grandma, the church is like, well, I tried. My heart is right. Her heart is right. She might not have got nothing but the benediction, but God was watching them. Girl, I see you, girl. I see you. You try. You at least, you doing it. You doing it. Come on. But they get on that conference call, and they gather. They gather. So, location to them, nothing. 
I don't ain't worried about no computer. I ain't going to buy no computer. I don't want to download no Zoom. I ain't doing nothing. I'm going to gather still. If that's what y'all know how to do and y'all can do it, y'all go ahead and do your thing. But I, I still need to gather. I want to gather with the people. I enjoy gathering. I still want to gather. So I'm going to get on this phone. But if I don't get on this phone and I don't gather, I still know my primary audience, my primary goal, my primary priority that's put in this proper place is how I worship and whom I worship. How I worship and whom I worship. So grandma didn't have a problem not getting on that phone. Grandma don't have a problem getting on that Zoom. Grandma don't have no problem if it don't come on TV. Grandma gonna be right in that house with God as her audience. And that is gonna be her true worship. Because we have to come to realize that it don't take all this external stuff. It don't take all this external stuff. But you must prioritize properly. If you want to be debt free in spirit and in truth, you have to properly prioritize. And your first priority is to be a true worshiper with God being your audience and you are the performer. And if you shift your perspective and stop thinking that everybody else is the audience, are you the audience and everybody else is performing for you? You got it twisted. I'm going to go to the bathroom. I don't need this part. I don't, I don't got time. I'm going to come afterwards. I'm going to come after worship after they sing them songs because they can't hardly sing no way. And the mics and system all messed up. I ain't going in there until 8. I ain't going in there until 12 o'clock when the pastor get ready. Well, you even got it all twisted because, first of all, you put God on hold all that time. God was your God is your audience. You're supposed to have been there on time to perform for him. So when you come late, he has been waiting on you all this time. I'll get there about 1130. I'll get there about 1130. He can wait. Uh-uh, who can wait? The pastor or God? Who we, who we performing for? Who, who, we the audience? Wow. So now if you think about it, God is the audience. I'm running. I am running. I'm not going to believe. I'm going to do everything in my, now that my mindset have been, has been shifted because I went searching and I went looking and I'm trying to figure out what is the truth? What is the truth? What is the truth? And my life is so much more peaceful because I know I'm not trying to run to a building. I'm not trying to please a man or a woman of God. I'm not trying to be the audience anymore. I now know that I am a performer and my audience is God. And he sent other people to give me the cues and the signs and to help me along the way. But I need to prioritize properly in order to be debt free in spirit and in truth. In spirit and in truth. So we've been trying to be debt free practically. Going out here working hard, we doing all this stuff, we doing all this stuff, and just can't seem to get it together. It's like it's always, you know, it's always and life and death is in the power of the tongue. Like, and if you if you read, you know that too. But it seems like I'm doing everything right, Lord, and I need your help. Okay, so you're doing everything right practically, spiritually. What are you doing? All right, you you doing what you okay? You got it. Yep, we working it. We working it out. Let's go. Keep going. Keep going. But you're going to keep going in the, tr- the spirit because you don't know the truth. And the reason you don't know the truth is because 1 John 4 is missing in some of the, the Bible. So you got to, in order to find 1 John 4, you really got to go look. You really got to go look. And that's when I realized what spirit and truth was really talking about. And spirit and truth in 1 John 4, when you read it, Verse 23 and 24. 23 and 24. I believe they say it's a parallel verse or something. So it's in, the, it's, in, it's in regular John too. But I want you to read. Don't just read 23 and 24. Do your part. Do your part. 
do your part so that we can be debt free in spirit and in truth. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I thank you for beating us here and meeting us here. We need you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for transformational messages. We understand that tradition is out of the way. Tradition is out of the way. We thank you for transformation. We thank you for the transformational seasons, Lord. That we're not just stuck in the same cycle. And when we realize in spirit and in truth that we can be debt free, there is another cycle. As long as it's a healthy cycle, as long as it's the right cycle, then we have we will have no problems with the right cycle. But the same cycle, Lord God, I pray right now that anybody that listens to this podcast, they go and they understand what your word says so that we can operate in spirit and in truth. We thank you for the practical. We thank you for the spiritual. But there is more. There is more. There is more. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for helping us through our illnesses, our sicknesses, Lord. Um, going through these external rituals, Lord, um, that's been put on us or that we only know because we have not done our part. We thank you for your grace and mercy, Lord God. But it's transformation time. It's transformation time. We thank you, Lord, that we understand that it's not about where we gather. That's not the primary that's not the primary. We thank you that we know who we worship and we know how. So the how and the whom is primary. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you that you come first, that you are our audience. We know that secondary comes after primary, so that is important. But we must make you first in order to understand the secondary properly. So we love you. We appreciate you. And today we make a decision that we will prioritize properly. We thank you, Lord. We need you. We love you. We appreciate you. We make a decision to prioritize properly so that we can be debt free in spirit and in truth. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Prioritize properly. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 